Right, I'm back again. As you probably noticed, I uh, I caught a trout or two. Well, I'm sorry, I landed a trout or two. I caught one. I forgot three actually. And the bloke on the film you saw, uh, Bob, he caught one. I don't know if you can see this. Um, but it still worries me the little a little crack. Uh, I'm thinking. If unlike my net where the where the stud this is not obviously but the other stud fell out <laughs> and you can see cracks in your landing net you might be able to salvage it without the palaver I did earlier in the video of drilling this hole and holding it all together and gluing it and all that nonsense so I'm gonna belt and brace with mine and clamp that crack together using one of these. It's a double eared hose clamp or otherwise known as an O clamp apparently. This is a stainless one so you won't find those in your, mo in your normal motor accessory shops. Now these used to be common on on cars and motorcycle oil and fuel lines. Apparently then no longer because I went into Halfords and a independent motor accessory shop. No, not at all. Don't do that anymore. So I'm not too sure what the manufacturers use these days. But these are these were good for putting on, but the mechanics didn't like them for taking off. But as we don't want to take it off of here, because you have to cut it off, see there's no adjustment. You can't loosen it. So I'm gonna put that on there and crimp it. You thought it was. You squeeze easy, squeeze these ears using, let's put the net down a sec, using pincers. Good old fashioned tool that, been around for hundreds of years, well at least a hundred. And they go in, in there like that and you crush it and that pulls them together. It's not the proper tool for it, but I did see some cheap kit on the internet I thought I don't want a kit. I don't, I don't like these things personally for, the, for their real use. No more than mechanics do. But for this job, it's what I need. I'm not, I'm not buying a special tool for one of these. So I thought I've got two of these, and this is my latest one. Even though it was bought in the 1980s for doing my flat when I got it to pull up carpet tax more than anything. And um, it fits in there rather nice. See, that'll be done in the vice. So before I start on that. Um, a little hint on these things. This is uh, the Pro Logic type quick quick change adapter thingy, or connector, I actually call it. But oh, that little bit there is where you put a spanner. It's one on the other side. See, now they vary in size. This is not a real Pro Logic one. It's got those big D dents or dimples, whatever you want to call them. Or sorry, D tents with a T. It doesn't sound right, but that's what they're called. But I keep in the car some adjustable spanners. These are cheap. Well, at least ones you get uh, from you know, sort of auto jumbles. And when you see a market and there's a bloke selling tools cheap, then God knows where they're from. You don't ask too many questions. Cheap Chinese coffee type things. But what you want, you can see that, you want the thin one. That's a thick one. They're not sold by width, and they're sold by how far the jewels come apart. But some of these, um, those slots, not slots, well, I suppose they are slots, aren't they, in this instance? The flats. You want ones that will fit in there like that. See, that goes in there. Nice and easy. Where the wider one, oh, get it wide enough, it just doesn't, and then you're stuck. Because there's no, unless you're super strong, you can undo these things. <laughs> Because every now and again you go to a, a, a fishery, especially in my club, in certain lakes where you're not allowed to use your own landing net because they don't because of various diseases, carp pox and the like. And they supply the landing net, but you have to supply the pole. Now my pole's obviously got the adapter for that. So what I normally do is unscrew that. Oh, this one's actually I can do it by hand, and I put it on the one in the fishery. 
and remember to try and take it off again when you go home because you want it to put it back, back on your own net. So anyway, I don't want that in the way for this. I don't want that O-ring in the way either. That glue hasn't glued it on. Not as good as it was, this O-ring. It's gone a bit hard. I might have to replace it. I'll get it out of the way for the time being while I'm doing this. Why is that so difficult? Get off. It's not as rubber as it was, and the glue's hardened it up a bit. Anyway, that's out of the way. So what my intention is, I can put it down. No, I won't. I can't put it down. Um, this is, like as I said before, an octagon. Let's turn this on. Zero. And across the flats, it's, oops, missed. 21 and a half. Across the corners, call it 22 and a half. So, oh, and the depth between the edge and that washer is, I have to do it the, the depth way of doing it, like that. I hope you can see that. Oh, I know that's about five, they are 5.1, call it five. And I think the same, always check the other side. Five point one, five point two. So these um clamps or rings are um this is a twenty to twenty three which covers that the um the size of that octagon. So I suppose it's twenty three to start with and it'll clamp down to twenty when you can fully compress the two ears. But the problem here is the width. 7.8, they're actually, it's sold as 8, it's nominally 8, but it's actually after deburring, you lose a bit, and it's actually 7.9, near enough. So I need to cut that in half. That's the hardest part of this, I think. <laughs> so, here's one I did earlier, because I bought two, just in case I screw one up. So I put a bit of white tape on it, and by eye, just marked around the edges with a Put this thing down, I damage it. Where is it? Yeah, by eye, mark round. So, what I need to do now is join it up and use that as a guide for the slitting saw to cut it in half. Like that, across there. Trying to mark on stainless steel on its own is not that easy, it'll just come off. It's very shiny, it's been polished for some reason. I don't mind that. So, roughly by eye, I'm going to cut it in half. Like that. Right, so this is now where I have to go down here. So, I have to pause the video while I re, re jig it all. Disappear this way. Right, I've got my eye protection on, which is the glasses I'm wearing anyway, which are very important, especially with stainless, especially with non-magnetic. I've seen bits of swarf being pulled out of people's eyes and I use magnets, and if it's non-magnetic you're in trouble, aren't you? So anyway, I'll put this in the vise. I'm not going to show you cutting all this, it could go on for 20 minutes or more doing this. Let's get it started. Let's hope this works, and I don't know if this thing doesn't shatter. The Dremel uh, slitting saw. Luckily, I have plenty more here. Where is the, where is the lens? There. There. Ooh, heavy duty, really? I don't think so. Not on a Dremel. <laughs> it's more of an angle grinder. Anyway, I've got more. I really don't like all this dust and swarf going all over the shed. But needs a must for the video, of course. So, hand where you can't too well. A hand on there. Oh, the, bit, the vibration of this doesn't make the film go all well. the tripods on the workbench. So here we go anyway. Let's see what happens. Mm. Mm. 
So that press go hard, obviously. Got, isn't it? Mm, start to go through. Probably a job at a hacksaw we so it takes forever with a hacksaw and you run out of strength. The stainless steel is tough old stuff. Come on, how thick is this stuff? In fact, once you get going and go break through, it should go. I feel like we would, it should hopefully go through it all right, quicker. And so this is not easy, is it? Oh, uh, pause the video there and carry on. Now we're coming to the last bit on the last ear. Uh, probably to collapse and fly across the room when it cuts through, I don't know. This is the second blade by the way. Ooh, I think we'll be careful. Might be worth doing the last bit with a hacksaw. Not cut through yet, that's right, nearly. off with a hacksaw. <laughs> it's getting dodgy. And it's in the right attitude for a hacksaw anyway. What have we got? Junior hacksaw. One of these. Oh, it looks massive. It don't look very junior in this close up, does it? Now, I'm not touching that with my fingers. That's right. Now, just so you know, this is a... Most people think the saw tooth should go that way. But I don't know what this thing can focus on. Actually, most of these things are, are cut on the pull this way, not on the push because the push tends to buckle the blade and it goes wonky, so it cuts on the back stroke, not on the hey, there. We go, we're through. All right, we'll sniff there now. Okay. Oh, that, these things are good. These type of pliers. Actually, just go under there like that. So, I loosen it off. And take it out, and that should be two bits. Oh, and the hacksaw can go back. Yeah, that's probably safer doing that with a saw. Not safer. Because with that clamped like that, and then you've got that slot, as soon as that slot breaks through, it's going to all fall down, and with that rotating saw, it might pick up and ping it across who knows where. We I mean, might get away with it, but you might lose the part. There you go, I've been cut in half. Not perfect, that side's about right, that side's a bit narrow, but better in this one, this half. It's very narrow just there, so that's a half we've probably discard. Now, I've peeled the uh, white tape off. Got very hard, getting very hot. 
and now it's sticky. So again, as before, the acetone is as good as anything to get rid of sticky. Be careful with the birds, I haven't deburred it yet. I might take it off. Hmm. Mm, coming off slowly. Anyway, so that's what has, that's my recommendations for getting rid of the gunge. Unless you want to do it without tape, of course. Oh, I've got all the gunge off, so there's obviously some burrs there. So file them off. It's got to be smooth, like I said, with a nut and bolt. You don't want sharp edges. And it'll cut you and it'll certainly cut the line. And you get rid of the worst with a file. Do that by hand. That's easy enough. An angle. So you put form a kind of chamfer. Use your fingers to feel it. Stainless is pretty tough. Try not to but file your hand away. Let's get the worst off and then I'll use the that thing, a flat, a mini flat wheel on the Dremel, just to smooth it off, finish it off. Basically, metal finishing. That's all it is, really. Pretty basic. That's a fine. I'm not sure what sort of file it is. Certainly isn't one of those bastard files, I don't think. <laughs> there is such a thing, anyway. Take the fence by me using that word. There's a genuine name of a file. Look the outside. I'm using the half, oh, this is a half round. You can see it, that gets my thumb. I think that can go on the inside then. If you can hold it still enough. <laughs> you said then done. Oh, it's a big bird there, I can feel it. Maybe I'll have to put it in. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Get on the edge here. So I'm going to get it really tight now. Because it, it damages the... That's better. Like that. Right, that that's better. And the top bit. Rough little bit of filing. What's that other thing? I'll turn it around and grab this off. this thing. Hopefully it'll work. It might fly up my hand. Oh, if I hit the right button. Out. <laughs> oh, my hand. Get in the corners. Like that. There's a big bear there, I can see. Just there. Let me see it. I'm not going to find it. I'll get the blue. There, yeah, there you go. Get rid of that. Oh, yeah, I've got rid of it. Just hanging on for dear life, it was. Feel around it. 
smooth, that's not smooth there. See that? Yeah, actually, not a bad idea. That. See what I'm doing? Using that little bit of flat on the vise. Any hard flat surface will do the job. You're not damaging the vise. It's just good. You can press down on the hard surface, isn't it? Uh, It wouldn't work so wood it could good on wood a block of soft wood. Yeah, bits of emery always seems to work better. In the end. Move your fingers all over it, feeling so that's good, that's better. A bit of emery. Get dust off my hand. Right. That file out of the way, don't need that anymore. Come on, get it back in there. Back to this again, then. So you can see it's a very floppy fit. Now, I want those ears sideways like that 90 degrees ish, thereabouts, to the bolt. If I put them like that, and I have to remove it, you've got to cut this, and you normally cut it through with a little bit of slitting saw or something like that, or a big pair of uh, wire cutters, powerful ones, through there. And that bolt's going to get in the way, isn't it, or screw. So if I put it that way around, that means that I've got access to get at it easy without damaging other parts. So that'll fit on there, all right, won't it? Let's have a look. It's quite heavy, isn't it? Yeah, like that. So that's going to go like, like that in there see it's square that's the idea now rather than fiddle and fumble around i'm going to crush one side only until it just about fits and then do the other one on the neck there are such things as single single eared ones but i presume the diameter range they cope with is much less and that being that being plastic, you're not too sure what it is, what the diameter is going to be end up when you finish. Will it be gripping it tight enough, in other words, to achieve what you're trying to do? Right, I've got to do it this way so you won't be able to see it crush because I can't hold it in the vise like that. It will squash the ring. So I've got to hold it this way around. Oh, I can do, I can do it a lot like that, can't I? Of course I can. Or a slight angle anyway, like that. So you can probably see something. Now I've never done one of these before in my life. I've taken them off and I've never put one on. So I'm going to get the jaws on there and let's hope this works. It could all be a little bit. Yeah, it just bends it a little bit really. Alright, peach. Check it to the net. Maybe do both sides bit by bit. Oh yeah. Actually that does that stays on there now, isn't it? Oh, which is this? So, okay. So what I can do, I suppose, is put the net in the vise so you can see what I'm doing. Let's get the Dremel out of the way, so hopefully it won't fall on the floor and damage it. Ah, and of course you've got the... So, I can still do this. Do it through the net. Right. Let's, hang on, let's open this out a bit. <laughs> Like that. Get that in there. There's a wheel in the way, as I say. Tangled up in there. Right. Come on. Well, it's not going anywhere, is it? <laughs> 
So we've done that off. I do this off. It's resting on the washer face, I think. Don't need to clamp the actual washer though, do we? I don't want that to do that. To make sure it isn't. That's a bit. Just so the plastic moulding just sticks beyond the, the stainless. Uh, we're done. All right. I want to do this side. Now I'm not left-handed, so let this work. I don't want to enough power. Got to care for these spiky bits, don't punch your skin. Oh, that sort of works. I'll do it this side. Again, side to side. Oh, you saw that move. <laughs> That's actually sort of slipped around, isn't it? I don't know why it's done that. What move on the top of the washer, isn't it? Damn. Anyway, it's on then to a degree. I'm not going to adjust it. Give it a little bash with a. Um, have a little screwdriver. It's not the right tool to use. And a little. There's a little aluminium hammer. Something that's not going to damage it. Aluminium hammer. Just knock that off. It's going to drop down on top of the washer. I don't want it doing that. Uh, A little bit the same this way. Right, do where that come from? Up there, out the way. Right, go back to doing it again. Don't know why it's wandered around there like that. It's a bit annoying, isn't it? Oh, I know it, it's it's a, I know what it's doing. It's aligning to the the corners. It's moving round, but it's octagonal, and going to those the pointy corners of the octagon. Never mind. I think it does the job. I had it more that way. This is quite soft stainless. Oh, that's interesting, you see it. Uh, I think with a real tool, it doesn't bulge out here like that. It goes more like a bow tie. It'll be flat sided. Like that. With that bit where my thumbnails are. Like that, I think. Or I think I've two, cut a bow tie in half. Uh, look. Anyway. About right, isn't it? Yeah. Can't fall off. I don't think that's come. That's not going to come undone now, is it? I don't want to overdo it because you might actually crack the plastic by crushing it to death. Oh, there you go. What's that look like? Now, if you were um. If you didn't need to drill that hole there, then a lot of this cutting it off will not just be necessary. You just put on up the clip and, the, and just tighten it up. And any crack you had anywhere will all be pulled in against the thread that's inside. And that'll be it. It'll be good. But you've got to keep an eye on it. And any signs of a micro crack. Is that crack? Yeah, that crack now is now closed up. What can you see? A special light here. I don't know. Does it show it that any better? There. Yeah. Oh, it's focusing on it. Oh. So yeah, the, the crack has closed up. But it was only microscopic anyway. But so hopefully that's never going to break again. If it is, it's going to break somewhere completely di uh, different. So. 
And that's what it looks like now. Not that's the prettiest thing in the world, but that should be alright. I can put the um, rather knackered looking o-ring, but it doesn't uh, function as an o-ring, just functions as a soft, pliable thing to tighten up against. Right on there, and the, the skinny one, but the nice skinny one, the skinny one. Don't overdo it because you're tightening on a bit of rubber. You could just keep tightening it until the rubber o-ring completely squashed and then you've ruined it anyway. So there you go. Done. If I look where are you? Over there, you can see it better there. Yeehaw. Thanks for watching again then.